Welcome back to my channel for a short Nikon episode, which will again be about the new Nikon Z6 Mark III. And I already posted two videos on this camera. One was my general introduction, putting it in perspective into the Nikon C lineup, comparing it with the Nikon C6 Mark II, which is the predecessor of this beautiful camera here in my hands. And uh, the second one was a tutorial about how to use the pixel shift multi-shot feature on that camera here to get to images with super high resolution of 96 plus megapixel. And what I also have here on my table is the Nikon C8. We'll come back to that in a second. And I also have here a power bank with a little fan. And what that all means, I'm going to explain in a moment. So what I want to do in this video is the following. The Nikon C6 Mark III, in contrast to the C8 and the C9, still has both a mechanical shutter and an electronic shutter whereas the Nikon C8 and the Nikon C9 have electronic shutter only. And the reason why Nikon can afford to actually have non-mechanical shutter in here is because the readout time of the full frame sensor in the C8 and the C9 is so fast that there are no rolling shutter effects if you shoot with electronic shutter and actually have no mechanical shutter on board. What I want to explore in this video now is the following. If I switch now on the Nikon C6 Mark III to electronic shutter, Will there be any material rolling shutter effects, which means distortion of moving subjects in the scene when captured with the electronic shutter? That's what I want to do. The fan here has some meaning in the kind of an experiment I want to do, which I will explain in a moment. And I will actually do exactly the same test or experiment for the Nikon C8 and the Nikon C6 Mark III and will compare the results and in this way come to conclusions whether it's safe to use the electronic shutter in the C6 Mark III and having no rolling shutter effects if you have fast moving subjects in the scene. Let's kick this off. In order to test for rolling shutter effects when using the electronic shutter in the Nikon C6 Mark III, I'll do a little experiment. And I've done this experiment in the past. I'll post the videos down below in the info box. And I think it's a highly efficient and effective way to actually explore potential rolling shutter effects coming with a camera sensor in a camera. And uh, the way we are going to do this, you see here in front of me a little fan. And that fan has here in one rotor an LED light. And these LED lights, they will create kind of illuminated circles. Let's have a look when I switch this on, how this works. I have mounted it on a power bank. And now the question is, if I take a photo with electronic shutter from this very fast moving fan, what will we see? And typically, and uh, here are some examples from videos I posted in the past, this image gets completely splintered if the readout time of the sensor is not fast enough. If the readout time of the sensor is fast enough, you will actually freeze the two rotors of this fan in motion. So let's have a look here. You will freeze it in motion if the readout time of the sensor is fast enough. And that's exactly the experiment I want to do here. I will take images very fast, one over 16,000 seconds. We'll boost up the ISO so that we see something actually and the scene is not too dark. And I will take exactly the same scene with the C8 versus the C6 Mark III. And then we will discuss the results and see what our conclusions are and whether we actually have material rolling shutter effect on the Nikon C6 Mark III, which we don't have on the C8 and the C9, or if it is safe, even with fast moving subjects, to use the electronic shutter in the Nikon C6 Mark III. All right, so this is how this experiment looks like. I have the fan in front of the camera doing its thing, illuminating these LED circles. We have the fastest shutter speed we can have on the Nikon C6 Mark III. That's one over 16,000 seconds. You see here the icon for electronic shutter, but I can also show you this in the menu. If you go into section D here and shutter type, you see it's on electronic shutter. And uh, that's the way we want to conduct this experiment. I'm widest open at f4. The lens I'm using is the 24 to 120 millimeter zoom lens, widest open f4 at all focal length. And the focal length I'm using here is 120 millimeter and I will do exactly the same setup on the Nikon C8 in a moment. And now I want to take the shot. So let's try to focus. Let's take the shot and let's see what we get. Here we go. Let's push the play button. You see this is not looking promising. There is actually quite some rolling shutter effect in that sensor readout time here. 
in the electronic shutter shooting. Let's go and do this again. Let's do this a couple of times. Now here you see again, this is splintering the scene and you will see in a moment that with the Nikon C8 that looks completely different. Let's do this again. Sorry, I was wrong. Let's go to the play button. Here again, you see this is not freezing the rotors in the way I hoped for. And uh, there is a lot of distortion going on. So rolling shutter takes place at one over 16,000 seconds. Now there could be one reason uh, which we'll find out when we switch to the Nikon C8. Maybe one over 16,000 seconds is still not fast enough to freeze these rotors. And it's not the fault of the readout time of the camera sensor but the fault of not being able to go faster than one over 16,000. And we'll try this out with the Nikon C8 because on the Nikon C8 I can shoot with one over 16,000, but I can also go much faster at one over 32,000 seconds. And that's something we'll figure out and try out in a moment. But here at least at one over 16,000, no success. I cannot freeze the rotors of this fan. Here's another good example. You see here freely floating rotors and you see here the LED rotor and here the rotor without any LEDs. So this is definitely not successful and not in the way I hoped. But as I said, maybe the shutter speed is not fast enough. Let's see now what happens if we have exactly the same constellation with the Nikon C8 with exactly the same lens 24 to 120 at exactly the same focal length 120 millimeter. This is now exactly the same constellation with the Nikon C8. You see the camera is bigger. We have here definitely more volume on the camera body. I can focus here on the fan. I'm in fully manual mode. We don't have to check whether I'm in electronic shutter because the electronic shutter is the only shutter this camera has. There is no mechanical shutter. And we are on one over 16,000 widest open at a 420 millimeter focal length and 16,000 ISO. Exactly the same constellation as what I had before on the Nikon C6 Mark III. So let's take a shot. Let's have a look how this looks like. Well, this looks different, right? Let's have another shot. There is distortion here. If we look at that, so if you see here, let me actually get the display away here. So there is distortion, but it's much better freezing the motion of the rotors here at one over 16,000 seconds. Let's try to do this again. Yes, no splintering going on. Look at this here, there is distortion but it's much, much better in terms of how this is represented here. It's almost freezing the rotors, just distortion them a little bit. And uh, let's be conscious about how fast that fan speed is here. Um, this will definitely not happen if you shoot moving cars, which are fast on the road. So let's take another shot here. Looks good. Never a scene where the rotors are splintered in the way we had it before on the Nikon C6 Mark III. Look at that much better result. I think this gives me a much more safe feeling about having electronic shutter only on the C8 than what I saw on the Nikon C6 Mark III. Let's do this again. Here we go. Distortion, but no splintering going on. Very good. One last shot. And then later we look at them quickly in Lightroom on my MacBook Pro. Here we go. Much better. Let's see what happens if we increase uh, the shutter speed here. So let's go to one over 32,000 seconds, which we cannot do, of course, on the Nikon C6 Mark III. So let's go here. Uh, let's maybe increase then the ISO value a little bit. Let's go here to 25,600. Let's take a shot. Same result. So one over 16,000 seconds seems actually to be enough in terms of shutter speed to being able to freeze the rotors if you really want and if the readout time of the sensor is fast enough. It's the same result as what we had at one over 16,000 seconds. So I don't think that the shutter speed is in our way here to actually do this experiment. Let's do one more. Even if we double the shutter speed to one over 32,000 seconds, the images I get out of this look exactly the same as what I had before at one over 16,000 seconds. So I think it's fair to compare now the images we got from the Nikon C6 Mark III with the images we got from the Nikon C8. And then I draw my conclusions. Look here. Quite good. All right, that's enough. Let's go to the MacBook Pro. Let's look at these images. So here we are in Lightroom and we have a bunch of images from the Nikon C6 Mark III with the parameters I showed in the video 
and a bunch of images from the Nikon C8 with 1 over 16,000 seconds and then also the last stage was we went even faster to 1 over 32,000 seconds. And uh, we have a consistent pattern here. So if you look at these images, first of all, they are almost kind of artistic if you look at them. I really like them and they're also sharp and I also denoised them a little bit in Lightroom because we did shoot at an ISO 16,000 as you can see in the upper left hand side corner in the shooting parameters. But the pattern is consistently the same. We have either a much more massive distortion than what we will see in a moment on a Nikon C8 or we even have one of the rotors being splintered away like here and uh, that is something or here for instance which looks much better than what I saw back then when I did the other video comparing the Nikon C7 Mark II with the Nikon C9. It looks much much worse and much more splintered on the Nikon C7 Mark II than it looks on the Nikon C6 Mark III but it is a consistent pattern. The readout time of the sensor of the Nikon C6, and that's my conclusion here from these images, is definitely much faster than what you had on the Nikon C7 Mark II, but it's not a match for a Nikon C9 or a Nikon C8. That's not what it is. And uh, again, it looks artistic, it's fine. Now, will this hold you back from using the electronic shutter? I don't think so. Because as you can see, again, looking at the Nikon C7 Mark II, totally splintered image, Looking at the images for the Nikon C6 Mark III here, there is clearly a lot of progress in readout time on the Nikon C6 Mark III. And normally if you shoot moving cars, a tram in Zurich, downtown, you know, moving subjects, the speed will be still far away from the speed of these rotors on the fan. So I don't think that in real life situations it is actually dangerous to use the electronic shutter on the Nikon C6 Mark III. But my recommendation is be conscious about it. If objects, if subjects move very, very fast, you might get some distortion, as you can see it here. And while well, that's another nice image, looks almost like a UFO hovering over the fan here, quite nice. Here we are now coming to the Nikon C8. And in the same way as what I showed before on the Nikon C9 in my video back then, in comparison to the Nikon C7 Mark II, yes, there is distortion but there is never a single image where you see splintering going on with the rotors of the fan. The Nikon C8, based on the very fast readout time of the sensor, in the same way as the Nikon C9, is actually capable of freezing in motion these rotors on the fan. And here we are now at 1 over 32,000 seconds. Let me switch back to 1 over 16,000 seconds, 1 over 32,000 seconds. There is no difference at all. It's exactly the same pattern. So it's actually not due to a fact that 1 over 16,000 was not fast enough in terms of shutter speed to freeze the rotors in motion. Because the C8 can do it, the C6 Mark III cannot do it. Consistent pattern here. All right, I think that's what it is. So my recommendation is be conscious about the electronic shutter and the readout time of the sensor on the Nikon C6 Mark III. But in general, you will be on the safe side because the readout time has been massively improved by Nikon in the way I demonstrated in this video. If you liked my presentation and if this was useful information to you, please do not forget to drop me a thumbs up. Stay tuned on my channel, there's always more to come. Thanks for watching, stay safe and healthy and of course, peace out.